science fiction conventions, and he looks at you and he goes, it's not in your job description, get lost. <laughs> and I've run out of all the usual demonstrations, because I've done them here before. And the last thing you want is to turn up and see me sort of rehash what I've done before. I had a couple of ideas, I, mean, I, I had a year's warning, brilliant. I had a couple of ideas, but they just didn't hang together properly. What I needed was some inspiration. And then three weeks ago, this appeared in the charts. Music master, yeah, please. I suppose the hydrogen that gets us in that heavy water. <laughs> the burner, he's a charlatan, because he didn't. The burner was already invented. What he was looking for was a flame that wasn't coloured, so he could do things like make coloured lights. There's a yellow one, there's a green one, almost, and that one should be, and that one should be red. Okay? And that's what he wanted. He wanted to play around with different colours, which means he needed a nice colourless flame. And in fact, what he did was he took the standard burner that was already available in the lab, and get this, all he did was drill a hole in the bottom to let the air in. <laughs> but for that, he's forever thought of as the man who invented the Bunsen burner. Load of garbage. Now, all of you have already seen 
this sort of chemistry this month, because this is what makes sure all those lovely fireworks at the beginning of the month were in red, green, and yellow. I haven't got any blue, because blue's a pig to do, and you need a bit more control over the flame temperature. In fact, the flame temperature in there is too high for the compounds that it is too high as well. I'm going to lose my eyebrows at this rate. Um, it's too high for uh, the compounds you need to produce blue. And all that's happening here is that uh, I've got a little bit of, uh, what well, is this fuel on its own? Now, ooh. Mm. I like barbecue, but you just couldn't just stand there. <laughs> It's one of the reasons I like to, because I can pick on people and they'll get their own back later. Um, all that's happening really is that I've just got a uh, source of fuel which, for some reason, I thought, you know, since it's the convention, I'd use alcohol. <laughs> um, and then dissolved in that, in this case, well, we've got this one you've seen before, the bright yellow. You've all seen if you cook on gas. I know it's like, you said. Oh, let's be honest. I don't think you're correct here, do I? No, no, no one's going to take me off and sue me. Good, right. Let's be, let's be honest here. The bloke's got his feet up and the woman's actually put the pennies on the cooker. Yeah, let's be honest. All right, and then the phone goes. Now, somebody's doing a job that's very important. So the one that's doing the cooker has to run to the phone. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Meanwhile, Mr. Bunsen burner is going flat out. The peas boil over, and a little bit of salt that you've got in there goes into the flame, and it's the sodium from the salt that actually gives you that nice, very intense yellow colour. It's a good job this T-shirt's yellow, because by the end of the day, it's probably going to turn out sort of dark brown. Again. Anyway, so that's just sodium, and that's the easiest one to do. Uh, to get the green, I'll just put a bit of copper in there, and that's how you get those the, um, there's a heck of a lot of copper put into things like Roman candles. I did this once in front of a bunch of school kids, and I somehow managed to get the spray to go exactly the right speed, and I've yet to do it again, but I got a complete flame ring out the other side, and one of these days I'm going to do it again. And just like before, there'll be nobody around with the camera. Uh, and finally, this one. You can get rid of various different things, but this is a right, really nice one. This is strontium, and all you do is just dissolve a bit of the compound that's got strontium in it in there. And if there were any heat sensors in here that weren't on, or were on, by now, we'd be outside. Because it's getting pretty warm here. Okay, fine. But uh, I mean, just the, the, the sheer chance of doing a bit of uh, synchronized flame colors to uh, somebody who I remember as a one-hit wonder, so you can now work out my age, roughly. Uh, it was a bit, a bit too tempting. Right, now, Fire. All you need for fire is three things. Probably four, actually, but most, most scientists would say three. One is heat, and you need that to actually start it and to keep it going. The other is a fuel of some sort. And the third one is normally put as air, which is a bit dodgy, really, oxygen. All right? And if right you've got those three, if it gets out of control, you're going to need the fire again. <laughs> but you do need all three. Now, I had about to buy these because I forgot to nick one of the wires before I got here. Uh, these are ordinary cotton wool pads. They're so ordinary, I haven't even broke the seal on. Incidentally, if science is so bad... Yeah. It says open here. And there's also a set of um, perforations, which don't work. Anyway, if science is so wonderful, why don't the perforations work? If science is so wonderful, explain to me why virtually everything you have now, you, you buy nowadays, has got pseudoscience speak to sell it to you. How about this? Oh, that's the French version. I'm not reading that. <laughs> Here we go. Hydro-entangled cotton is a modern method of cotton processing which binds the cotton fibers together with high-powered jets of water, resulting in a soft, strong product which doesn't fleece. You realize what this means, don't you? They made a batch, dropped them in the shower by mistake, and then dried them out on the radiator. <laughs> Honestly. Now, this is a fuel that's set oxygen in the air. And... Yeah, we'll do this. No, we won't, will we? She's very careful with us, by the way. 
Not. You wouldn't believe how difficult it is to get traditional wooden spills nowadays. And uh, it does, just about, if you try hard enough, come on. Even though it's been treated with pulsed hydrojets, will it act slowly burn? Probably not hard. That one just came straight out of the factory. There's no problem with that. But it takes a while. And the reason it takes a while is because there's a limited amount of oxygen in the air, and it's going to try and get inside, you know, to actually where this thing's reacting. Now, that's all very well. But if we can sort of up the amount of oxygen a bit. Now, these have been um, ever so subtly treated. Yes, I had a fun day in the lab with a mixture of nitric and sulfuric acids. <laughs> which is quite nice. You stick, you, you, it's one of those nice things, you know, you pour it out the bottle and it comes out the consistency of syrup. It's that strong. But when you mix the two together, it's a proper piece of chemistry because you get a column of white fumes coming out, you know? And um, anyway, so this has been uh, nitrated. But now part of the nitrate bit has got quite a bit of oxygen in it. So if we just... Um, now that goes up quite a bit quick, quicker and in fact, I've now been told how to make it even better. The usual thing, you do it, and then somebody comes along and goes, oh, I can prove that. But it goes quite a lot faster. Now, in fact, if it wasn't for the fact that I can get away with doing that, um, because, supposedly, I have letters after my name, uh, what, I, what I would have done would be totally illegal, because what I've made is gun cotton, and you're not allowed to make an explosive. Though, technically, you know, we can argue whether or not that's an explosive, in fact. So, uh, but this is the stuff they used to use to stop the, um, the gunpowder falling out of the, uh, the muskets or the cannons. And it literally was just a wadge of cotton. And they picked up some nice peasant somewhere and said, do us a favour, grab the whole of cotton and just stick it in that bucket, will you? No, it'll be all right. And, <laughs> and um, they'd nitrate this stuff. And, uh, and then it would, it would take, you'd have a, a wadge of gunpowder with gun uh, cotton to keep it all in place and then it's doing a great lump of steel. And uh, the reason they would use that rather than say just an ordinary watch of cotton is can you imagine what would happen if you're in the second row with your musket and you pull the trigger and out goes the ball towards the uh, opponent, sure, but your mate in front of you who's just got a, you know, a hydro-treated wadge of cotton that's burning down the back of his neck. <laughs> He's not going to fire another one. Yeah? So they wanted something that, A, provided even more gases to make that lump go faster and hit the, uh, the person on the other side even harder, but also they wanted something that disappeared virtually instantaneously. Now, if I get the recipe correct, that will go even better next time. It smells a bit as well. So that's all to do with just getting the right amount in there. That was supposed to stay alight the entire time. That's my I see, right, fine, be awkward. Anyway, um, well, since we've done gun cotton, I suppose we better do the real thing. This is as close as I can get to bringing out into the public arena gunpowder. This actually was uh, bought for me by Carlton TV, nice people that they are. Not. <laughs> they actually, um, Phone the university one day. Is that enough or should we do a bit more? <laughs> and um, they phoned the university and said, uh, do you know anybody that uh, knows anything about explosions? Now for some reason they decided to phone me up. I can't say why. And um, cut a long story short, I ended up being a scientific consultant for Carlton on this particular show they were doing. It's called Cable's Quest. Which basically this Burke, um, this very highly paid actor, um, who went round every week and tried to find out about things. Now, I knew I was on a loser to start off with when the, uh, the fax machine whirred into life, and the first question was, "What is an explosion?" Right. So we started on that basis and sort of worked forward. And they uh, they wanted to uh, show gunpowder. And uh, initially they said, uh, oh, we'll have to get some. And being fairly innocent, what they did was they approached the chief constable and said, oh, we've got this tame chemist. He's got billions of letters after his name. He knows what he's doing. Can we have uh, an explosives license for black powder? <coughs> and of course, the guy said, yeah, yeah, it should sound all right. 
What they hadn't taken into account is part of the explosive license for gunpowder says that you must have a secure storage facility that is bolted into at least four inches of concrete. Now, the university is just not going to turn around and say, oh, we'll just lay down a slab of concrete because it's Roy messing around again. <laughs> um, so eventually, we had to get around it somehow. And it's, it's the usual thing. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And I actually turned around to one of the technicians who's in um, the sealed knot and said to him, well, what do you not use? He says, oh, well, if you go down to this shop, and I'm not going to tell you where it is, and hand over about uh, 15 quid, I think, Oh dear, 17, expensive. You can buy a can of this stuff, and it is virtually gunpowder. So, uh, if you don't see gunpowder go off, here we go. Now, it doesn't go back. It does put your blowtorch out there. <laughs> 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 now, about, <laughs> there will be an intermission in the middle. The reason for this is, we're going to try and get the smoke out of the room as fast as possible. <laughs> smoke detector up there going flat out going, well come on, where's the bells now? <laughs> anyway, it's going to get worse, I can assure you. Um, Gunpowder is in fact not an explosive. It's really just a, well, it's technically a low explosive. Really it's just a propellant because as you've seen, it goes fairly slowly. They all knew that anyway because you've all watched the John Wayne movies where they light one end and it goes, yeah, towards the big barrel. And just in time, whoever it is that's the current flavour of the month comes riding over the hill and kicks them. Yeah, you know, it's all done. So it takes a, it's a fairly slow uh, burn, actually. And the, the only reason gunpowder actually goes bang is not because it's inherently a very fast, high power explosive, but because what happens is you contain it. So it tries to do that inside a container. And it tries to get an awful lot bigger because it's producing lots and lots of gas and it's hot. And the container's going, and eventually it's the container that goes back. Okay, sometimes the container's missing one end, and you've got a lump of sharpened steel there, and it's that that gets pushed out. But basically, it's the container which makes the bang, rather than the, uh, the gunpowder itself. And that's a jolly good thing, because otherwise, we wouldn't be able to buy after the fire. No, 99% of the fireworks that you and I disappear into shops and buy <coughs> and play pyromania with every year. Because virtually every... Uh, firework you buy is powered by gunpowder. Now, one of the things I found out while I was working for Carlton is that there is a link between alcohol and gunpowder. And it's not just that you're not supposed to drink and then play around with the stuff. Because um, most of Yeah, I think so. Most of you will remember the days when you bought a bottle of something, it would say 80% proof, yeah? Rather than nowadays, it says something like 4.3% absolute volume alcohol or something like that, yeah? Now, the reason for that is, once upon a time, they didn't have all these clever electronic gizmos where you shoved a bit of alcopop or whatever your particular poison is in, went for coffee, and when you came back, there was a little number up. <laughs> yeah, which is what, how most chemistry is done nowadays, which is relatively boring, if I'm honest. Well, I think so. One of my colleagues got a lot of money for doing things like that. In fact, one of them, the head of department of all people, in fact, if my memory serves me correctly, there's a young gentleman who's actually helped in this endeavour, has somehow managed to get himself a name for testing whiskies. <laughs> now, of course, there's a whole bottle got to come in, hasn't there? You've got to take out a little adequat, that's a technical term for bit, um, and squirt it in the machine, and then what happens to the bottle? <laughs> now since, now I'm on camera, I was going to make a link here between the quality of management in the university and the amount of whiskies that have been tested, but I won't. But you've got it. Anyway, the percent, what they did was proof of the spirit. They tested to see whether or not it had enough alcohol in it. And they did it with gunpowder. I've lost my gunpowder, there it is. And what they did was this. Plymouth Gin used to do this, and in fact used to make gunpowder up on Dartmoor, um, and yet to find out whether or not the gin went to Dartmoor or if the gunpowder came into Plymouth. I know they used to export a lot of gunpowder actually, they used to make it up on Dartmoor, bring it down the, uh, the railway line that runs next to the plin. I've got to tell you this, on the way here, I walk past two people that just come from the station and one of them says, so where's the river ply then? <laughs> 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 My mouth, yeah it works. 
Um, anyway, what they would do is they'd take the latest batch of gin and uh, they'd mix it with gunpowder. Now, that's a particularly potent mix in my view, but there you go. And then they'd do the obvious thing. Set back to it. Oh, come on. <laughs> the one thing that's bound to go wrong today, by the way, is, is I'm useless with cigarette lighters for some reason. There we go. And if the gin was decent, it would start to burn. Now, this gin, of course, is a mixture of alcohol and water. Now, the alcohol's burning and trying to get the temperature up. The water isn't, and it's trying to keep the temperature down, basically. So, um, they do this, and they just wait for a bit. <laughs> this is great fun for everybody who's here with camera, because, you know. Let's <laughs> <laughs> think about it. You've got to wait for the gin to actually get down to a sensible level. Because you, the problem, of course, is most of the heat of the flame is at the top, and the gunpowder is at the bottom. But sooner or later, and it's beginning to think about it. Yeah. Can't you? <laughs> oh, right, mate. Normally, see if I get. Of course, there is the usual tactic with any chemical that refuses to play ball. You just turn your back on it and immediately... <laughs> yeah. 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 Unless, of course, you uh, turn your back on it and say it will immediately go. Just yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Never return to a firework once it's lit. There we go. And if there was enough alcohol in the gin, the temperature of the flame was high enough, and consequently, it would set off the gunpowder. <laughs> <laughs> now that batch has now been proved to have sufficient alcohol in it. So that will be called proof spirit. Now the last thing you'd want to actually sell your gin at that point, because you've only made a certain amount of it, so you'd start to cut it back with a bit of water. Maybe you'd have 80% proof gin, or 40% proof gin for the real, you know, weak need whatnots. Yes? And that's where percent proof spirit came from. It's actually, I think, about 56% 56% alcohol. Something like that. Yeah, if uh, you, uh, you don't like smoky atmospheres, you can probably um, next door's a good thing. Um, <laughs> now, actually, when I did this with Carlton, they brought this actor guy in. Oh, crumbs. I mean, I think I'm larger than life. This time, hi! <laughs> <laughs> and we must be losing our laps. You know, and there's glass where going, bye! <laughs> <laughs> and you do this for the camera, and they say, right, John, what we want, we want you falling, yeah? and then I have a close up of you, yeah, okay, good, yeah, no, no, do it in the other hand, that's better, yeah, one, yummy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no two big people in here, is there? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, all of this, I don't put too much in, because what we want, we only want about 15 seconds on the flat, and then we'll go, woof! Okay? Right, so, take one. All right, we, actually, I, I'll tell you, I think just, we fixed it. They brought me a bottle of Thermos gin. I took them for coffee. The technician pours the gin out of the bottle into one that mysteriously disappeared, but I believe is in his home. <laughs> <laughs> he then got out of the, uh, our store cupboard 100% absolute alcohol, <laughs> okay? Because the last thing you want is, they're not going! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, okay, right, take one. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> um, what he thinks is true, but it actually is 100% alcohol, okay? Went down one side of the dish, straight across the bottom, collecting the gunpowder from his way, shot straight out the other one, and the, and the camera is going. <laughs> These guys knew so much about media, I had to tell them how to make a, a bright white flash and a puff of smoke, which is what they wanted. And I'm thinking, look, it's very easy. You get in a car, you go and talk to the nice people at the stage, electrics. Stage. Someone's doing media? You might have met them before, but no. <laughs> Strange people. Uh, it was take six they took, by the way, which point this guy went, <laughs> 
and froze. Meanwhile, we went, Bleep. and he went, <laughs> and they still had to cut a bit out because, just like you, you, you're sitting here, you know, it's okay, you can mention the young man got around today. <coughs> so that's why Proof Spirit used to be. And it used to be a great story, but now all you see on bottles is, you know, percent. And it's probably now, uh, and it's called Kenny's, so they're a box of tricks, not half as much fun. Now, <coughs> Gunpowder's all very well, but actually, my favourite element out of all the ones in the periodic table is this one. This is a, um, a strip of magnesium. Now, I hope you all, you, you, you've all seen this in school, lab, haven't you? Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, no, I won't. <laughs> oh, good. Excellent. Right. Hey, you know me too well already, haven't you? <laughs> oh yes, we do. <laughs> I promise not to set him up this year. I might have renege on it. This is a nice long piece of uh, magnesium. Magnesium is actually very good. relatively cheap because there's quite a lot of it around on the planet. Um, I do hope all those cameras are looking directly at this because what will happen is they'll never work again. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I'm just also thinking, I'm not sure the spirit bird is actually going to be able to light this properly because I don't think it's going to be able to do that. So we'll go for the, um, the high tech version. Oh, yes, I remember that. Oh, it's there. I did, I did that in the lab last week and I wish I hadn't because I've discovered that this canister of fuel is not very clean. And I think I'm just going to put the mockers on one of my experiments later, which is okay. Maybe the hotel's got one in the kitchen. What? <laughs> 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 it's a, it apparently it's a serious... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're creme brulee nowadays. Um, I'll see what we'll do. We'll... Oh, bother. I forgot about that. Alright, we'll see when they're on spirit burn. No, I wouldn't. I borrowed the camera. It's not mine. Boys, come on. That's <laughs> the problem, isn't it? That's a bit that old. Tension mounts. Oh, oh. I now remember why I brought the fire blanket with me. Now, magnesium uh, gives that nice, bright, white and uh, yes there's a heck of a lot of that goes around in uh, November the 5th but also it tends to go out if you leave it up the wrong way for too long. I can't see a thing now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was used as a tagline for a series somewhere. There we go, let's give it the wrong side. Um, one of the nice things about magnesium is that actually although it's fairly unstable and when you get things right it does fall apart and by reacting with oxygen rather nicely to give you lots of bright white light. Fortunately what happens is that uh, it reacts quite slowly under normal conditions so that strip can hang around because there's a little layer of oxide on top of it. If you like it rusts and it's the rust that stops it rusting anymore. Now again, you're going to give out aren't you? Go on, go on, go on. Yeah, there we go. Now, uh, Not just the bunny. Uh, so you've got to stay out there. Now that's all uh, rather nice. It's a bit tame. It's a bit controlled, isn't it? Yeah. Now just while I sat with um, check on the cat there. Could you do me a favour? Because you see, at this point, what I really need is a long scarf, but I don't have one. But I would like to have Jelly Baby anyway. Can you stand yourself for Jelly Baby? <laughs> so Go on. Tap. So what? The bunny can have a Jelly Baby as well. Oh. <laughs> Nothing. Sit down. You've just got jelly bag. That's all. The sinister. <laughs> Don't eat it. Don't eat it. No, oh, it's edible. It looks like one of our relatives. Oh, this. I'll take a moment. I'm not eating it. <laughs> 
<laughs> at least wait till the end. It's a lot of hard work. Don't you shut your head off. Do it later, all right? Oh, there we go. Well, this is not a proper, proper chemistry experiment. Decent story. So, now, now, because the person who does all the hard work at the university for me to do things like this gives me a naff stir which stops when you look at it, go, go. Thank you. Knows he's dealing with an academic. I've got three solutions here, and just to make sure I put them in the right order, there's A, <laughs> <laughs> and C. <laughs> he's not stupid, is he? Right, now. <laughs> No expense there for you, lot. Absolutely no expense. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Now, I actually discovered this by accident because I, I got a, a, a book out of the British Library, because Alice didn't have it. That's pretty good, that. Not too bad. Um, and uh, I put it out, in fact, for, uh, for Gary, of course. Not for me. And, uh, yeah, right. Actually, I was looking for things to, to get to go bang, strangely enough, for you lot. And I came across this, and it was just so, I mean, just the, the right of it, it was so wonderful, I just had to do it. Yeah, so, this is, oh, this is the, you know, the traditional, you know, it changes colour thing, like all chemistry. Well, I thought, we'd, we'd disappear into the tradition of that. There we go. I think we're going to don't disturb the vortex. Not the vortex. Maybe, <laughs> you fancy a slice of uh, fairy cake? Um, <laughs> provided I don't disturb the vortex, we'll be all right. Now, if we add all this up together, we should end up with a nice green solution. Just to prove that you know, chemistry could be pretty too. <laughs> and then slowly, over the next couple of minutes, the stirrer oh, should stop. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a pain in the stirrer bar. There we go. Let's go. It should slowly fade to a nice deep amber. In fact, this is sort of <coughs> connected, sort of connected stirrer, really. Mm -hmm. Go on, do the banging noise as well, that's it. It's sort of connected to one um, fire, because what's actually happening here is what's called an oxidation reaction, which is sort of cool. <laughs> <laughs> the green turns to yellow. That's a book. Right, thank you. This is sort of connected to um, fire because what's going on is a very similar reaction. It's much slower and obviously done underwater. But the idea is that the, the green compound is acting as the fuel, basically. And then as it reacts away, it gets that nice, deep orange colour, which is okay as things go. We should. <laughs> 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 this is the way science works. You set everything up and they say it works. And you go, right, fine. And then something like this happens. Right, you just don't pick it out with me anymore, all right? Good. I thought it would just be useful to demonstrate that actually uh, you could... <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a green jelly belly? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Have you ever had jaundice? <laughs> <laughs> you might have by the end of the day. Okay. Um, this is what's known as an oscillating reaction. Anybody, you must have heard chaos theory. Yes, yeah, what happens on my desk on a Monday morning. Um, this is close to being with chaos theory. And in fact, what's going on here is there's a couple of strange attractors, if you've read the books. Okay, and basically they're fighting it out. And the thing is, oscillating backwards and forwards between two different pseudo-stable states. And when it's green, it stays green, great. But what's happening is producing something that the reaction that turns it yellow needs. But the other one won't kick in until there's enough of it. So it's sort of constantly going backwards and forwards. Now, I didn't actually ask whether we could do this, but if someone could turn the lights on, please. Zero. Yeah, absolutely, you know, can we, some black photons would be nice if you've got any. <laughs> I've always wanted to invent the black follow spot for the baddie in the pantomime. You could follow them around a hole, you know, great. Oh. So artistic, you know. Oh, there we go. This is a standard UV tube. 
You can tell I don't use um, ecologically unfriendly washing powders because I don't glow in the dark, unlike the badge. <laughs> and uh, I put this here, and it decides to do its trick. <laughs> this is the Model T Ford stirrer. You can see that the orange one actually fluoresces, just like your highlighter pen, quite nicely. And then if we get this thing to uh, think about the vague possibility of oscillating, there we go, it turns itself out. The trouble is, if you stay too near a beaker, somebody somewhere says he's got a wire up his sleeve. There we go, go on. It's, I want to stir up, I need you to stir up, thank you. So a server sort of just orange and green, hopefully we've got something that glows in the dark, and then every now and again, not because the server has got an intermittent fault, will actually turn itself off. <laughs> now, I'm waiting for somebody to think, hang on, this is a dumb good idea. Speed it up a bit, and then all you've got is a little canister with no wires attached, yeah? You go and you buy it from Sainsbury's probably for about 20 quid because they want to make some profit. And then you can get away with speeding on the motorway by starting this thing up and sticking it on your roof. And you go, <laughs> <laughs> motorway maintenance without a battery. Okay, you might like again. I mean, it seems it's, you know, I better to ask now because uh, I'm supposed to be here by Wednesday. Um, I was absolutely nothing to do with fire, but it was pretty, and it's given time for the air conditioning to cope with the smoke. Right. You lot won't remember because you're all too young, but many, many years ago before I was on the planet, when BBC Two started up, they couldn't get the timing correct. So they would always allow about three minutes between programs. And they had uh, intermission, and you'd have a little film clip of some guy on a potter's wheel. Well, not the guy, the clay on the potter's wheel with the guy standing next to it, obviously. Yeah, making some jug or something, whilst this, you know, the music for Brahms played away and somebody's going, have you not the next reel ready? Magnetic reels then, there you go. So uh, that's my equivalent, if you like. Slight intermission while we change the program. Right. Now. Oh, yes. Now, I really do need someone who's going to earn their jelly baby here. Yeah? That's a really nice jumper. There you go. <laughs> oh, can you bring your purse with you? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pay for the jelly baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't like American evangelists, but I do like a certain phrase. I don't want to hear it rattle, I want to hear it rustle. That's an interesting card, do you accept that? Tenor. You're a generous person. But is King George the Sixth still in front of Now, we, we didn't talk before this, did we? Because no. they'll always assume that this is some sort of, it's not chemistry, it's magic, see? So I'm just going to put this brilliant. Now, one of the nice things about the inks that are used nowadays, they're totally water soluble. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they're not, but they were for a while. <laughs> um, oh, I need my spirit burn back again. Uh, have you literally got money to burn? No. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> good Do you want your jelly baby now? <laughs> I mean, you might as well get out while we're going to go. I'd save you £10 a day, but certainly have a jelly baby one. Oh, right, okay. <coughs> okay. It's very democratic, you know. There's one colour's gone, and then it was sort of fairly even, but we've still got two orange ones, but we'll see. Anyway. Works in rehearsals, by the way. <laughs> now, I mean, I know, I do hope that, uh, that this was going to be used in the charity auction. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this was the easy one, which is going to work. It's fine. Another go. I'll tell you what. I'll give you a decent tenner back again. I'm that generous. I, I know someone will take these. 
technicians will tell you things. I think what happened there is I was a bit too slow, so let's try it again. Let's, uh, let's just do that, actually. Go on. Do we get the feeling that really... I'll tell you something else, though. That's my tenor. Is that a micro radio microphone? It's very expensive, but it's not anymore. Right. Um, yeah, what should have happened there? We set the fiber. I'll disappear. I'll, uh, I'll pass that one off somewhere else when it's dry. I'll do that anyway. I mean, theory, what should have happened there? I don't know. Chemistry, magic, it's all bad. I'll have better work now. Um, was, I'd soak that, actually, in a mixture of alcohol and water. Much like the person who was trying to run the, the mini experiment. And <laughs> just like gin, what should have happened is the alcohol should have caught light. Ooh, that's the right label. Have you been talking to Jeremy? Has he set me up? Wouldn't be at all surprised now, you? Um, this is where This is where research comes in. You see, you think, hang on. We'll just test this to make sure it's actually flammable before the spirit burner goes out as well, but even that's kicking me about today. You know, I've had this before, non-flammable alcohol. Give <laughs> stuff. Oh man, I tried it out of that bottle not two days ago. Look at that. Brilliant. This is where it suddenly goes up in the sheet of flame. Oh, it's just about managing to... Mm -hmm. I think what's probably happened is some of the alcohol's evaporated. <laughs> You swine. Here you go, you see? What should have happened is the, um, the alcohol should have caught light and the water should have kept the, uh, the flame temperature down low enough for the antenna um, to be completely unscathed. <laughs> <laughs> At which point I'd have swapped them over anyway because the last thing you want is a wet tenor in your pocket, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. out fires, and quite right too. It's very good. And the reason for that is, being a liquid, it will tend to cover whatever it is that's burning and cut the fuel off from the oxygen. But the other thing it will do is, uh, because it boils at quite a low temperature, it will um, take a lot of the heat away. So it's taking the heat away, it's cutting off the oxygen, you left the fuel on its own going, no party. It doesn't always work that way. Magnesium comes into play again, yeah? Uh, coarse magnesium. In other words, this one swears a lot. Um, oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> now, this one definitely worked, worked in rehearsals. In fact, it worked so well, we had to open all the windows in the lab very rapidly close the door because we have a fire, a smoke detector in the corridor and its little red light was going, I'm sending messages and we're going, no you're not! <laughs> now I'm just going to put a little something on the top which will um, start things off I hope. Yeah, a bit more maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you see how we weighed out to at least eight decimal places of the ground, you know, there's this sort of stuff and uh, it was, here's the really high tech piece of kit, it's called a spatula. Now, the reason I didn't mix these, well, you'll see why I didn't mix these, I hope. Because uh, it had rained on the way over when I mixed these. I <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, might be fire like that. <laughs> right. 
Actually, come to think of it, I think we'll... Are you making nervous? <laughs> if you wait, you might be carried out. Much easier. <laughs> genuine water, I've just drunk it out of a genuine hotel, uh, Cockthorn Hotel glass. Sound too good. 
<coughs> it's good, isn't it? All you've got to do is turn the thing sideways and it doesn't work. Plenty of gas in there. I suppose I could just stick a match. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Ah, oh, you saw that. I've got a bit of magnesium left. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, <laughs> somehow that little bit comes out. This is good, isn't it? I mean, you know, first of all, the, the 10 ball, the 10 pound note I planted doesn't work. Would that be first help? No, unfortunately. Can you have do I need a P, was that? A P. Oh, sorry. <laughs> cool. No, I did, I did buy earlier. No. Um, I've actually got a piece of wine which goes through the hole, but I can't find the hole, which is worrying. You have to something that's not blind. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who wasn't here earlier? <laughs> you cowards. The central insert comes out somehow. Uh, and then you just, I've got a bit of wine that goes through it, apparently, according to my technique. Yeah, well. 
well. Of course, you're paying Barney out for this welding job, man. <laughs> What's worrying me is this flame goes up and down. Okay. <whistles> Meanwhile, in an artist's studio, just next to his burnt tumbler. Oh, that was hot. Goodies. Yes, never mind. Um, it's not exactly science fiction, but there you go. Uh, oh, well, hang on. I think the molecule moved. <laughs> I think we're running out of gas! I don't believe it. Oh, what's this button marked turbo? My hand sandwich is second to none. Oh, oh. Ah, now do we have the problem we didn't actually have in the lab the first time we did this? Actually, I think the phone's too hot. Never mind. Don't worry, worst comes to worst, very molten, nasty stuff will shoot out of the tube. <laughs> and all you've got to do is panic and run. Oh, that's a good question. Actually, I, I think I'll tell you the sort of people who sort of um, associate with me. My, my wife is a biologist by training. Uh, but her claim to fame is she managed to melt a Pyrex test tube, which clearly said that it could not be melted on the side. <laughs> and then a garden school bounce the burner. So, uh, what chance do my kids have? Honestly. We said that my daughter's decided to become a historian, which of course is a social science. Now there's an oxymoron, I don't know. A bit like civil engineer, really, isn't it? <laughs> It's times like this I really wish I'd got that t-shirt I saw for sale on the internet. It clearly says, I am a bomb technician. If you see me running, try to keep up. This is actually blue. Can you take it back, Gary? Can you say, A, I wouldn't use that again. And B, where do you get these from? Well, oh, it's a bit hot, actually. It's beginning to decompose, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Dark. I'll put jelly bag. Wrap it. No, okay. Dark. And the problem is I've got to get all of this malt, otherwise um, there's going to be a little platform in the middle for the, uh, the jelly bag to sit on and laugh at me from, which I'm really not interested in. <laughs> What sort of sad people is it that sit around waiting to see the death of a jelly bag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I tell you, it feels like 20 hours, 20 years at the moment. It's like, uh, come on then. Look, it's going green now. Oh, mind, we managed to, that, the bird ahead on that, we managed to uh, purloin from somewhere. Because the, uh, the blowtorch that we actually bought is so powerful that what happens is it starts this thing decomposing before it, it's even properly melted. So we've got that burner on it and it worked a treat. It was the right height and everything. And I'm going, oh look, just for once, everything's working. <laughs> and then I went and turned, all I did was turn it sideways. And I work with BMK, I'll tell you that. What do you think your blowtorches are used for? Welding? <laughs> Plumbing work? No, no, no. Oh. Behind me, because they might be like me. He is. Oh, he's worth. 
<laughs> We're getting there. You know what's going to happen? You're going to hit that perfectly working about 30 seconds after I've got this done. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right, since somebody's mentioned it. I had two PhD supervisors. They were like talk chalk and cheese. Both of them were totally mad. Um, Pat Hendra managed to get <coughs> quite nicely now. A couple of PhD students from China. Now these Chinese students, their theory was amazing. Uh, the nearest they got to practical chemistry, I reckon, was making chicken chop suey. Now, that's all very well, but he had them working in a glove box, a big metal box with gloves inside, so you, you have no air on the inside, right? Looks like something out of BNFL, you know? And uh, anyway, he's telling them how to use the box, and everything has to go in the airlock, and then you spend 20 minutes flushing out all the, uh, the air, and then you take everything out of the airlock and you put it into the, the glove compartment, and they're all taking cookies, and I was like, oh, yes. Okay, uh, and then you close the second airlock door. Close the second airlock door. And it says, at this point, Sod's law comes into play. <laughs> Who is Sod? He knocked on up in our textbooks. <laughs> what? You've not heard of Sod's law. Where, where in library we find Sod law? <laughs> <laughs> and you know he sent them off to find it? <laughs> <laughs> PhD. I mean, the guy's an absolute nutter. Anyway, well, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's just a few little bits on the top, which uh, I'll, let, I'll let the top cool off. Come on. God, I haven't had so much fun since I was watching the paint dry. Um, come on. I'll be quite gentle with this, because the last thing you want is the bottom of it to boil, because if it does, it will form a dirty great bubble, and the bubble will go upwards. We'll take everything with it. Right, I think we'll just leave it there. I won't even touch these jelly babies. I know where they've been. <laughs> you feeling still feeling okay? Yeah, I could. I'm moving Still feeling your carrot? No, that was earlier, Robert. I don't want to know. <laughs> Actually, I do. Tell me later. Uh, right, let's just make sure this is. Yeah, I think we're there. You think it might be working? Oh, it's making the right noises. Don't put it too close to there. It's got a rocky bottom now, though. Have your um, Thank you. amazing... Yes, thank you. you thank the hotel. In fact, why don't you offer them some more business? I think you'll run a convention here next year. <laughs> leave this. The stand's shorter than the one we used in our lap. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Never mind, let's do it. We had it, so you just stuck the thing underneath. It was the right height and everything. Here we go. Now we're on turbo power. Um, now this has better be good now, really, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 It's a fire exit. I can get out quickly while this oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's guarded! <laughs> I don't mean there's going to be a fire, I just want to get out before this lot try and lynch me for having wasted 20 minutes of their time to view something that's not very good. Right, here we go. Now, I just want to... I did not choose this jelly baby. You cannot have me for racism, speciesism, or anything else, all right? You lot, there were two of each, and this was the final one. You decided. Okay, so this was the winner of the Big Brother. And I think it's about time that we played Burn Jelly Baby Burn. <laughs> now, strangely enough, red ones go better. I don't know why, but they do. Now, just let that be a lesson to you. Now, I think you've done something down in Globe Right White if your feet are in 300 degrees of uh, molten, very strong oxidising agent. Now, I said that that was the grand finale, which wasn't that grand in the end, never mind. There is a. There is a. There is a, there is a uh, we <laughs> take this guy out. Oh, we're off. Remember 
think it works, and I had my burner all balanced and everything, of course, I set this up while the jelly baby's going flat out. I know, no, the unlucky day was the day I said I'd do that. Oh. I hate to think what I'm inhaling back here, but never mind. Come on. <coughs> you sure the fire alarm's turned on? It's like, what were you doing in here? Oh, just burning jelly babies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't realise it was a black cover. Coursework. <laughs> Other people use red bio. This just doesn't have the same effect. <laughs> <laughs> 